Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I was surprised how popular my Fender Hunting on Reverb episode did, so I thought we would do it again, but with Gibson this time, because I know the market a little bit better. So let's go ahead and hop over here to Reverb.com and type in Gibson. Shopping for Gibson guitars is a little bit easier because you don't have to go over here and do all these different categories. And that's because Gibson specializes in guitars and not too many low-end products. So let's go ahead and search through this. First off, I'm seeing an RD artist. It's just too much, nothing too much to see there. But this reissue, that's not too bad of a price for one of those. Light and resonant, seven pounds, four ounces. Well cared for, natural relic. There we go upgraded with Lindy Fraylin hum canceling P90s. So in this case, you know, those are high end pickups, but seeing as you don't have the original components, that'd be a little bit difficult to flip. And honestly, since I'm more of a review and demo type of guy, I'm not really too interested in this one. But for an end user, I think somebody should pick this up. So you can definitely check that link out in the description. Moving on here. I am really excited to see this Firebird 3 because that appears to be a really good price. It Oh, and it looks like I bought something from this guy. Oh, a chainsaw case two years ago. Dang it. Headstock repair. Changed hardware, but original pickups. Need to move quick. You know, I really want to start documenting these vintage Firebirds, but they're just so darn expensive. Let's see how bad that headstock repair is. That's not too bad. I'd be comfortable buying that guitar. Let's go ahead and look this thing up. It's times like these when this vintage price guide can come in handy a little bit. I do not trust this book 100%, but let's see what we can find in here. It looks like one of these in really good condition is worth between 33 to 43. So man, that actually does seem like a pretty attractive price with the original pickups in there. But sometimes that price guide's wrong. So let's see what else is on the market. It looks like the only one there is 7,950 bucks. That seems overpriced. Yeah, here we go. One sold for under 3,000, one sold for around 35. Let's see what's wrong with this one. I bet that one had a headstock repair too. Hmm, maybe not. This one just appeared to have uh, been beaten up. Something weird going on with the face of the headstock of that one. But it doesn't look like a headstock repair. But you also have to keep in mind that was over two years ago, so these pricings might have changed a little bit. But another helpful hint for making offers is the reverb price guide, because this is going to show you all the recent sales of these guys. So here's one of those situations where the price guide I think is a little bit wrong when it puts it at 3300 in that book. It appears that the floor actually needs to be about $500 less than that, so 27 so with a headstock repair, I think I'd be comfortable paying 18 for that because 22, I think is about what I would be able to sell that one for. But something doesn't look right about that truss rod cover. I think that's been replaced, but maybe the seller's counting that as the hardware. Moving on here, we've got somebody that wants way too much for their customized Les Paul. These Melody Makers are great guitars, more than I would pay for one though. Well, this one's kind of cool, let's check it out. A limited edition Les Paul Access Custom. So that means you're gonna have that heel joint at the back looking like that. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. I would prefer it to still be silver burst on the back, but they didn't do that. They kind of cheaped out on this one, I think. But you get all those other comfort cars, but no back binding. Ooh, <laughs> that's a bad choice of tuners for a custom. Why would they put Clusens on that? That looks awful. Yeah, but at least the top looks nice. Continuing on, what else is gonna catch my eye here? Well, you've got the SG standards. I love the ones from this era, but that I never pay that much, especially if it's not completely all original. People ask a ton of money for 70s SGs, but they do not sell. I think the highest I've ever been able to sell one was about 18 to $2,000, and it was a lefty and white. So in this market, I would not suggest paying more than $2,000 for an all original SG standard from the 70s or 80s for that matter. And I'm not seeing anything else that really catches my eye here. So let's go ahead and move on to page number two here. These customs are nice. I've had one of those before. I like it because you can see the wood grain underneath and especially when you've got the pickup covers on, it just makes the guitar stand out so much. And the Clusen tuners make a little bit more sense on this one since some of the old 50s ones did have it. Here's a pretty nice deal on this Melody Maker. 
So this is the one that I was talking about that's very similar to the Les Paul CM that came out a year later, but this one's just a dual P90 version. I've had a lot of these guitars. Unfortunately, we got all that buckle rash on the back, but you do get a hard shell case, and that's a plus because these came shipped with gig bags. The only thing that makes this not a deal is the $90 shipping. It's not gonna cost you that much, man. It might cost you 50 to 60 at the worst case scenario. When I'm selling guitars, I always do 65 for shipping because usually it is around that once you add insurance costs in there. Ooh. I like these quirky things. They're really hard to sell, and apparently this one's been refinished, but this does have the ABR1 bridge instead of the Kaler setup. And that's exactly what these guitars are meant to be. Refinished and just crazy out there pieces. Because, I mean, that's what the XPL body style is all about, right? But come on, we've got to find a good deal on something. Ooh. Gibson Explorers from the 70s are extremely expensive. So why is this one so cheap? <laughs> I think I found out why. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I think Jason Hook must have owned this one because his explorers have that extra little cutout. I did a review and demo of his signature guitar. That is a terrible thing to do to a vintage explorer. Oh, and to top it all off, he got a chip on the headstock. So I mean, if you need a player's grade 70s explorer, that's, a, that's about $2,000. I think you should be able to get a little bit off of that. Maybe 1,500 to be fair for somebody who just wanted to play it. But what else is wrong with it? Eh, you don't have original pickups either. But you have a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge and a 59 in the neck. That's a pretty good combination. Honestly, the 70s pickups in this one would have been a tarback, and they're just not the best pickups to begin with, so not a huge deal on that one. Oh, here's a Blues Hawk. So, Blues Hawks, they're really cool, and people have wanted me to review the Blues Hawk and the Night Hawk. But for the Blues Hawk, I'm being very, very picky. It has to be blue because obviously Blues Hawk. <laughs> so I'm not interested in a black one, but what's really cool about these guitars, besides having P90 pickups, is they actually have a dummy coil installed in the back of them to get rid of the hum of the P90s. I just think that's such a fascinating thing and I would love to tear one apart to show you guys how it all works. One day for sure, I'll definitely review a Blues Hawk, but I'm looking for a blue one at about $700 to do it. And as you can see, that search has taken me a while. So what else do we got going on here? For whatever reason, the market seems to be so heavily inflated with prices that nobody pays anymore. I mean, $3,500 for an 86 to 89 Les Paul standard? What, you can't even tell us the real data manufacturer? <laughs> if they know it's a 1988, why don't they just put it in the title? But the reason why the late 80s standards are popular is because Slash used one. So people want a premium for these, and it, it's just not there. There's nothing that makes these intrinsically better than what they're making yet today. Because the 50s and 60s standards that you can buy in retail stores today, they are fantastic guitars. I mean, this one, it's like a $2,500 guitar at max. Hmm, what's this? Guitar of the week. I still need to make that video where I document every single one and just show you them all in one separate video. That way, when I get all the reviews and demos of them, I can just point you there so I don't have to teach the same lesson over and over. But this, it appears to be a Les Paul Studio that has binding and potentially a satin finish. So it's kind of like those 2018 Les Paul Studios that got binding for a short period of time. Except for this one comes stock with EMG pickups and a satin finish. That would make somebody a great player. I don't see anybody paying anywhere near that much though. The Guitar of the Weeks, they can be collectible, but I would probably say a 14 to 15 is probably top dollar for that one. I couldn't imagine that would be a super popular one. Three pickup Black Beauty customs are always beautiful. That's honestly not a bad price, but why is it listed as brand new? Ooh, this listing gives me the creeps. So at least all of the backgrounds match, but something about it being listed as brand new, 
for a fair price. 3,500, it's not a steal, but that is a very fair price. The cheapest you will ever find one of these three pickup Black Beauty customs for is about 2,800 bucks. Top dollar is about 4,000, so that's a really fair price from somebody who's never been on reverb before, and there's absolutely no description. Uh, I would not suggest buying from that listing. Moving on to page four. Come on, we gotta buy something. Make the episode interesting. Ooh, three quarter size Melody Maker. I would not pay anywhere near that much for it, but I think it'd be fun to document one of those. These were designed for kids or somebody who wasn't quite as tall. So they have three quarters of the scale length. So they look a little bit goofy, but apparently there's a niche market for these that certain players actually enjoy playing them better. Ooh, now we got two cool ones right here. So that is an attractive price point and it's kind of an interesting guitar, but I want to take a look at this Explorer first. I've had a lot of people ask me about the Gothic series and why I haven't done them and all the other various ones. Honestly, it's just I can't find them at a price that I could still get out of them while doing the review and demo. And on top of that, most of them are beat to heck because, you know, they're relatively inexpensive. They got this cool picture of Orville Gibson on the back. But this one seems to be in pretty good shape. Does it have a case, though? Matte black finish, all original. Come on, is there a case? No case. Ugh. Those came with cases, I'm pretty darn sure. And I don't think I have an Explorer case. But I'm always down to have an Explorer on the channel. But then you see things like this. Somebody got one with a case for $749 five years ago. <laughs> it's always funny when somebody's trying to haggle and they show you something from like five, ten years ago. It's like... Sorry, the market's changed a little bit. It looks like somebody put EMG pickups in here, so that always kills the value too. So I really want to make an offer on this, but it's going to cost me at least 120 bucks to get an Explorer case. And I'd probably want to sell this thing around 1,000 bucks, I think. 1,000 to 1,200, but I always do my lowest estimate. So m minus 70, minus 80, minus 120 bucks. That means I would have to get it for about $600 to make it worth my time. I doubt it'll go for it, but we can always try. But now this one, ooh. This is pretty nice. So early custom shop version 56 reissue. Mahogany top, which is a special feature because this would have normally had a maple one. And it's saying the back of the headstock has an early custom shop logo. And he's saying it has a slightly slimmer neck than a regular R6, which is probably a good thing. So let's see here beautiful top. I'm digging the mahogany tops. As I was telling you earlier with that custom, the mahogany tops are just beautiful on these reissue guitars, especially when you get this nice top carve. Ooh, I like that fretboard. It's like a half and half. I'm sure if I was picking a brand new guitar out, I probably wouldn't pick it, but that's something that kind of gets cooler with age. Huh? This is the type of guitar that somebody would send me on my Facebook page asking me if it's real or fake. That headstock does indeed look very questionable, but I think it's just the photo angle. Custom Shop Edition. Okay, so we've talked about this from 1983 when they first started doing that for limited runs. I guess it would depend when this guitar was made. I would kind of have to contact Gibson about this one because this might actually technically be pre-custom shop, but the early custom shops also had that. So it's either a limited edition run that kind of had slightly historic specs and it would be a prehistoric and it would get this custom shop edition because of the mahogany top on it, or it's just a limited edition from the custom shop. Yeah, let's see if this guy's a dealer. Yeah, he's a dealer. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get a deal on it, but <laughs> I'll still make him an offer here. 2200 is what I'd feel comfortable paying because I would want to sell it for about the same. Well, at least we're putting some offers in. It makes the episode a little bit more interesting. Junior special with humbuckers. So this comes from the era when Henry had a great idea to name the juniors the junior specials and I think there's like a special junior or something crazy where the names just got mix matched and confusing but this is a Les Paul special that has binding on the neck but has humbuckers instead of p90s and instead of a wraparound bridge you've got the tuna matic this one's got a satin finish with a little bit of wear there but I could definitely see this making a great player for someone 650 
not the worst price. I bet you could probably haggle this guy down to about 575 shipped, and then you'd be pretty happy. Ooh, here's a cool Iguana Burst Les Paul access. Ooh. You know, I've done a BFG. It was Gator Green, and it's beautiful. Silver Burst on a BFG is ugly. But something about it just works at the same time. I would prefer one that Les Paul signed. There was a small run. But this one, it's looking pretty good. It still has the original wooden knobs on it. It's ugly as all get out, but ugly in like a cool way. Gibson recently reissued the BFG. Ah, no. I hate it when I really get into a guitar and then I see all this buckle worming and rash. The less I have to explain in a video, the better. This was definitely somebody's road warrior, but it does have a case. Uh, I don't remember. These might have came with gig bags. I would not consider this very good condition, though. I would consider it good. So I would pay 600 bucks because of the wear. Maybe we'll get a Firebird yet today. So I was going to end Trade Tuesday season two with one of these things because they're relatively inexpensive. You can get them as cheap as 1400 if you're really looking and you're really diligent and you don't mind a little bit of wear. But top dollar is like 2200 bucks, which I think is an absolute steal for a custom shop Gibson Firebird. But this is the non-reverse style. It's, it's not quite as popular as the reverse Firebird. That's the one with the neck through body design. And this one has a nice gloss finish. But everything else about this is looking like it's in pretty good shape. Ooh, even the custom shop case. But it's kind of hard to tell if there's a COA in here or not. I'm guessing no. We'll have to check the description. We'll see if 1450 interests him. Ooh, this is a pretty good price for a signature tee if anybody's looking. I don't think I'm going to buy it because yeah, it's kind of a boring white color, but it is translucent. You can see the flame top underneath. So is there anything wrong with it at all? No, it actually seems to be in pretty good shape. Ooh, <laughs> there's always got to be a catch to good prices, right? You've got to chip off the headstock. All you have to do, take a little bit of white out, and then you won't even notice that. So definitely look this one up, Gibson Les Paul Signature T 2013. I bet you could get it for $1,000 in shipping, and that would be a fantastic guitar for the price. Those Signature Tees and like the uh, traditional pros, they are a great value that you can get between like $1,000 to $1,400 pretty readily. Now it's starting to look like I've already seen these before. So this Les Paul Studio Platinum is cool, but it's got a little bit too much wear for my tastes. Ooh, Eric Clapton Firebird. I think they just recently announced this one. I know, I paid, what was it, $14,000 for the Slash Double Neck guitar, but I would never pay that much for a single pickup Firebird. That's a reissue. At least with the other guitar, I got double necked and an aging thing. Same thing kind of goes with this Alvin Lee ES335. The thing I have against that one is they've already done it, like, two or three other times. So that's why I didn't buy one of those for a review and documentation. <gasps> Ooh, I've been looking for one of these. Okay, so I hate the SG-1 series. It, they don't play that great, but I've been looking for this P-91. Fortunately, it looks like we're missing that cover there though. So what's the rest of this condition like? Because I think top value for one of these is about 1200 bucks. I wouldn't mind doing the P90 version. The other thing about these is they're maple guitars. So they, they're not overly heavy, but they, yeah, it's just the neck join that's weird with these things. But you get pretty decent wood grain. Looks like a little bit of finish worn there, a little bit on the volute. That's a massive volute. And our tuners are bent. And no case. Those things just came with chipboard cases anyways. This guy... Wants a little bit much. So within the book, it's saying 850 to 1125. This is one of those terrible situations that I find myself in a lot. I want to document the guitar, but haggling that down to a reasonable price would be relatively difficult. But sometimes with guitars like these, they're a little bit hard to sell. You can leave them an offer and sometimes they come back to you. So let's see if we had any responses to our offers yet. Unfortunately, no. So I hope you enjoyed window shopping on Reverb with me today. If you're new to Reverb, check that link in the description. You can get $10 if it's your first purchase on the website. 
Otherwise, you're just supporting the show shopping through my links. All right, thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.